Hello, I am Pastor Jefferson Cox of Grace Lutheran Church here in Clearwater, Florida. Welcome to our service of the word for the third Sunday after the day of Epiphany. I have a brief announcement to make for our congregation. On Sunday, January 31st at noon, we are having a drive-in congregational meeting for our January semi-annual congregational meeting required by our Constitution. All voting members of the congregation are encouraged to consider attending. Also, I have a note about our lessons today. If you're following along in the lectionary and you watched our service or experienced our service last week, you may have been a little confused about what gospel lesson we used. What I did is I took the gospel lesson appointed for this Sunday and I used it last week. And so now we're using the gospel lesson that was assigned to last week, this week. Why am I doing this? Because this, the way I'm doing it, is the proper chronological order in which those lessons take place. So I figured it just made a little bit more sense. So our gospel lesson today is from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. And now, whether you've been a member of our congregation for all of its 60 years, or these are the first 60 seconds you've encountered one of our worship services online or anywhere in between, we are all invited into the worship experience. Welcome. All the baptized have a calling in God's world. The story of the calling of Nathaniel plays with the idea of place. Nathaniel initially dismisses Jesus because he comes from Nazareth. But where we come from isn't important. It's where, or rather whom, we come to. Jesus refers to Jacob, who had a vision in a place he called the house of God and the gate of heaven. Jesus says he himself is the place where Nathaniel will meet God. Our service begins with confession and forgiveness and the gathering hymn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of life. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Thank you. 
we continue with the greeting and the prayer of the day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are invited to prepare your hearts and minds for the scripture readings, the sermon, and the hymn of the day. The first reading is from Jonah chapter 3. The book of Jonah is a comedy starring a reluctant prophet who is given a one-sentence message. Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. Much to Jonah's dismay, the people of Nineveh repent. The point of the story is to get the reader to wrestle with the question, on whom shall God have mercy? The reading. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned away from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 62 and is read responsively. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the sails together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians. Paul does not disapprove of marriage or other human social institutions. He does, however, want Christians to live in the present in fervent anticipation of God's future which even now has dawned through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The reading. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus' ministry begins with the call of disciples, who then bring others to Jesus. Philip's friend Nathaniel moves from skepticism to faith when he accepts the invitation to come and see. 
The Holy Gospel according to John in the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome once again to our service of the word and at this point in the service it is my privilege and opportunity to share with you a message that's based on our lessons and in particular our gospel lesson. That same lesson that uh, was appointed for last week that I moved to this week and in this lesson uh, after we heard last week about the calling of Peter and Andrew and James and John as fishermen into fishers of people and a if you're interested in what I had to say in regards to that service, that lesson, uh, you are welcome to watch and experience last week's service, our second Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, but today I have the opportunity now to share with you a message based on this story from the Gospel of John. The story that takes place the day after Simon and Andrew and James and John were called to be disciples. And this is the story that involves Philip and Nathaniel in Jesus. And it's a pretty amazing story. Uh, and this story makes me think about uh, the different uh, moments in my life. I, I've kind of created a list of what I call almost magical moments in my life. Uh, moments that are etched permanently in my memory and that have significant uh, importance or, or just moments of profound beauty or uh, some other uh, amazing uh, thing that, that happened. Of course, uh, one of those moments was uh, holding Joseph for the first time after he was born uh, and, and you know, obvious things like that. But one I, I would like to share with you is a, a moment that happened when uh, I was uh, traveling to Australia with Jenny and Joe and some friends and uh, we happened to have the opportunity to attend a special concert at the Sydney Opera House. And uh, the concert we went to was in the concert hall, which uh, the Sydney Opera House actually has multiple theaters. Uh, one is the Opera House itself, but there's also a concert hall and some other um, uh, places to watch and experience uh, concerts. And what we did is we attended a children's concert at uh, the Sydney Opera House and it was an opportunity to uh, explain to children a little bit about orchestral classical music and and uh, it was a fun concert and uh, they had uh, different instrument groups uh, talk about their instruments and so on but the, the most magical moment about that day is uh, the uh, they were trying to a, a, get kids to realize that they were probably more familiar with classical music than they realized. And the example they gave was um, that uh, we know that, that tune, um, almost universally known, um, is uh, the tune to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, 
and we learn our ABCs to that same tune. So, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Well, they explained that that tune was written by Mozart. And so, if they're familiar with that tune, they're familiar with a little bit of classical music. And so what they did is they, they had all the children in that concert hall sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star together. And that was such an amazing, beautiful moment. The sound of those hundreds of Australian children lifting their voices and singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And the, the acoustics, of course, in that facility were superb, amazing, world-class. And so the music itself just filled the space. Uh, but these, these, these voices blended together so well, and they, they sang it. And it's absolutely one of the most beautiful moments I've ever experienced in my life, especially a musical moment. And all it was was children singing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star together. In our gospel lesson today, we see Philip, who's experienced the, the calling of Jesus, go and, and find his friend Nathaniel and invite Nathaniel to also experience what Philip has discovered in Jesus. And Nathaniel at first is reluctant, but then Philip issues his invitation come and see. See for yourself. See for yourself what Jesus is like and, and who Jesus is. And I think he's the Messiah we've been waiting for, but come and see for yourself. And so Nathaniel does. And that little exchange between Nathaniel and Jesus is interesting. I, I, in that exchange, we see uh, Jesus say that in Nathanael, there is one who there is no deceit. And then Nathanael asks, well, how do you know me? And then Jesus says, well, I saw you under the fig tree. We don't have the privilege of knowing what was the significance of that moment under the fig tree. But I think it is tied to what Jesus said about Nathanael being someone in whom there was no deceit. That experience under the fig tree must have been a very important moment in Nathanael's life, even though it had just happened. It must have been of such significance that Jesus being aware of it was all Nathanael needed to know, to know that Jesus was indeed the Messiah the Son of God. And so Nathaniel responds with faith. He responds with, with grace. He responds with a life of discipleship. People of God, we are called to experience God's presence in Jesus all of our lives. But we're also called to invite others into that experience. I'm sure that moment of being called by Jesus was even a greater special moment for Nathaniel as it was for all of the disciples. And we have our own special moments as well with God. We have our own special moments where we have felt God's presence and we have felt God's power, and we have known our calling. And sometimes that lasts, and sometimes it fades, but I think all of us have those moments somewhere in our life where we've felt God's presence. But it isn't just about having those experiences for ourselves. When Jesus calls us into discipleship, he calls us into a life of being willing to share those experiences we've had with God with others, to invite others into those experiences. And of course, in our crazy world right now with 
pandemic and, and our disconnections and our isolation and, and so on, it's harder than ever to invite others to experience God in the ways that we are the most used to experiencing God's presence in the worship, in the sacraments. And yet, and yet we have opportunities to share God's presence, God's love, God's light in ways that we never really had before as a congregation through these online services for instance, in our, our Zoom meetings and, and uh, our uh, DVDs that we create and, and send out and uh, the bulletins we mail out and, and so on, that we have these tools with which to connect others to the proclamation of God's word and, and prayer and a message of grace, a message of love, message of peace. People of God, as we walk through this season of the Sundays after Epiphany and think about the ways in which God is revealed to the world, we know that uh, how we help to reveal God to the world is a challenge. Challenge that we have never really faced before. Obstacles we've never had to overcome before some of our best tools being kept off the table like never before. And yet, we've now developed new ones and new skills and new insights. And I hope that even in the midst of the frustrations we have, that our resolve has been strengthened to be willing to invite others to come and see. In Jesus' name, amen. We now enter into a series of prayers, starting with the prayers of intercession. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, especially those on the prayer list of our congregation, and those we name now before you with our lips or in our hearts. That in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, especially those resting within our memorial garden, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Offerings to the Mission and Ministry of Grace can be made online at gracelw.com. Look for the Donate button. Or by mailing a check to Grace Lutheran Church, 1812 North Highland Avenue, Clearwater, Florida, 33755. You can also fill out an attendance form on our website. If you are new to Grace through our online services, please consider sharing a little bit about yourself through our attendance forms. us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. We now give thanks for the light and the word. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now transition from worship to service with the blessing, sending him, and dismissal. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Together we have heard God's word and joined in prayer. We have given and have been forgiven. Now, as the service of worship is ending, our service to the world is beginning. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.